Hello there. Today we'll continue taking a look inside the Dell PowerEdge R410 rack mount server. In the previous video we focused on looking at the storage system which includes the hot swappable hard drives and the RAID controller which is situated over here. Today we'll be taking a look at the compute parts such as the CPU and memory which is located under the cover over here. So let's get started. First of all, in order to get inside of this cover over here, we're going to have to remove the cable that goes from the back plane of the hot swappable hard drive bay to the RAID controller card over here. That's because basically the cable goes through the groove that's part of the lid that covers the CPU and memory. So let's go ahead and remove that cable first. So first of all, let's move the cable that connects to the perc 6 i RAID controller to the back plane from this groove over here. So first of all, do that. Then there's another cable that connects the RAID controller to the backup lithium battery. So let's just get that out of the way. Then we'll go ahead and pinch the sides of this connector here to remove the cable completely. So pinch on that and pull and it should come off the card. There we go. So now we can just move this to the side like this and remove the cover. Just like so. Now we have access to the CPUs and the memory. So as you can see, the Dell PowerEdge R410 is a dual socket system. In this particular machine, I have two Xeon L5630s, each with four cores. So this is a two CPU system with a total of eight cores. I also have two 8 gigabyte DDR3 1333 MHz ECC DIMMs installed in this system. Let's go ahead and take a look closer up. First thing to note here is that the CPU heatsink is very short. This is because the 1U chassis is less than 5 centimeters or about 2 inches tall. You also see that there is no active cooling, that is, there's no fan directly attached to the CPU. Rather, there are fans blowing right into the CPU heatsink so that the heat generated from the CPU can be exiting through the back of the chassis. When we actually turn on this server fan, you'll notice that the fans over here are very loud because they run at such a high RPM and they're very small, but they have to push a lot of air through this section of the server. It might be hard to see, but this is the fan that's sitting right next to the CPU. And it says that this fan is able to push 30 CFM. That's 30 cubic feet per minute. Actually, the interesting thing about this fan is that if we take it out, we can take a look. This fan actually has blades in the front and in the back. These are actually counter-rotating fans to really increase the amount of air that can be blown through. Okay, I guess we'll look at some other parts that are around here. As you can see, there's four memory slots available for each CPU. I believe each of them can carry 16 gigabyte DIMMs, but at the moment I have only eight gigs and I have two of them, so they'll give this system a total of 16 gigabytes. And by the way, this system does require ECC RAM to be installed, but then again, secondhand ECC RAM tends to be a whole lot cheaper than the consumer grade RAM, which is kind of interesting, but it just turns out to be that's the market price for these memory modules. Another interesting thing I saw was that there's a lot of voltage regulation related components near the CPU. You can see a bunch of capacitors, what appears to be voltage regulators, I believe, and such that are located near the memory and the CPUs. So I guess these are kind of things that are required to give the CPU and memory clean power without ripples and other things that could cause problems, which would be particularly important for server systems because for servers, you really do need that reliability. And speaking of reliability, since you're using RAM like ECC, which can detect and correct certain types of errors, it wouldn't be really prudent to provide unreliable power to the components when the components themselves are designed to be as robust as possible. Aside from that, over here is the remote management module of this server so that you don't have to have a monitor or keyboard plugged in to control it. This is what Dell calls an iDRAC module, integrated Dell remote access control module, I believe. 
This basically provides like a web interface from which you can control the server over the network. And toward the back of the chassis, there's a couple of gigabit ethernet ports, a couple more USB ports, and a VGA and serial port. While we're at it, you can see that the motherboard actually integrates a lot of ports. First of all, the power for the fan, and I believe the speed management as well, is all located on what would be considered the motherboard. Also, on the same board, if we look over here, there's a bunch of SATA ports and a riser card for the PCIe slot to which the RAID controller is connected to. And also there's a, a backup battery over here as well. So along with the typical things you might find in a PC motherboard like this battery, you also have things like, I guess riser cards aren't that common in PCs these days, but in servers like these where height is at a premium, you tend to see these pretty often. All right, so I think that pretty much covers the interesting parts about this Dell PowerEdge R410 rack mount server. If you enjoyed what you saw today, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Also, if you have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. Also, you'll be seeing some recommended videos show up over here, so if there's anything that looks interesting, please take a look. As always, thank you very much for watching, and see you next time.